Assalamu alaikum. How are you, dear students? Welcome to the channel, the Physics Gurus. I hope so. Okay, you people are doing well in your Cambridge examinations nowadays. So, paper two or theory paper ka bada ek important part jo hai wo hum discuss karenge aaj, and that is the definitions. Definitions are very important part of the theory paper, and sometimes three to four definitions are being asked in the theory paper. So, if we correct definitions, then we can easily grab or secure those marks. So, I will upload different videos on this topic, that is the definitions of the syllabus 2022. And uh, in part one, we will discuss the definitions related with the unit one physical quantities, units and measurements, as well as unit number two kinematics. So, let's start the definitions of unit number one. That is physical quantities, units, and measurements. Okay, so in this unit number one, we will discuss the very first definition that is scalar quantity. The quantities which can be described only by the magnitude. Magnitudes mean which can be just a muske sir of value batate hain. These quantities are called as scalar quantities. For example, mass, time, speed, distance, etc. The second definition is of the vector quantity, the quantity which can be described by the magnitude as well as direction is called vector quantity. For example, force, weight, velocity, acceleration, all these quantities are vector quantities. So what is the difference between scalar and vector? Only the word of direction. In scalar quantity, there is only magnitude. But in vector quantity, along with magnitude, there is a definite direction. So direction separates the or distinguish the vector quantities from scalar quantities. Then for each and every instrument which is being designed for the measurement, that has a minimum value which it can measure. Yet minimum value is measure and that minimum value is called as least count. Her instrument ke liye, this value is the fixed value. For example, meter rule ke liye, the value is 1 millimeter or 0 0.1 centimeter. For vernier caliper, it is 0 0.1 millimeter or 0 0.01 centimeter. For screw gauge or micrometer, it is 0 0.01 millimeter or 0 0.001 centimeter. So, for each and every instrument, it is a particular least counts value. Then, zero error. For micrometer, what is meant by zero error? The reading shown by the instrument without an object. When we are using the micrometer, or when we close it without placing an object, so, if you reading show, karte, then that reading is called as zero error. There are two type of zero errors for the micrometer. Number one, positive zero error and number two, negative zero error. So, what is meant by positive zero error? When an instrument shows slightly more reading than zero without an object, then that reading is called as positive zero error. And what is meant by negative zero error? When an instrument shows slightly less reading than the zero without placing an object, then that reading is called as, or that error is sorry, called as negative zero error. So how many type of zero error are there? Two type of zero errors are there. Number one, positive zero error, and number two, negative zero error. In positive zero error, instrument will show slightly more reading than zero. And while in negative zero error, instrument will show slightly less than zero value. The next definition is of the stopwatch. What is meant by stopwatch? A device which is used to measure time interval of an event is called as stopwatch. For example, if I want to start walking from one side of the room to another side of the room, then I have covered some distance and the time duration during which I will cover that distance will be considered as an event and that even time can be measured by a device which is called as stopwatch. There are two types of stopwatches. Number one, analog stopwatch and number two, 
digital stopwatch. In generally, analog stopwatch ka least count is 0.1 second and digital stopwatch ka zero least count is 0.01 second. Or in other words, analog stopwatch can measure one over 10 seconds of a part and in general, digital stopwatch can measure one over 100 seconds of a second, one over 100 part of a second. Then next definitions come frequency regarding the simple pendulum because simple pendulum vibrates. Frequency is denoted by a small f, the symbol of frequency is small f. So what is the definition of frequency? Number of oscillations or vibrations passing through a point in one second is called as frequency. There is another definition related or linked with the frequency and that is time period. Time period is always denoted by capital P while simple time is always denoted by small t. So what is the definition of small t, a capital T? Time required to complete one oscillation or one vibration is called as time period. So make sure that whenever you are supposed to write down the symbol of time period, then it will be always written in capital letters that is capital T. And then there is a relationship between the frequency and time period. So there is inverse relationship between frequency and time period that is F is equal to one over T or T is equal to one over F or the product of frequency and time period will be equals to one. So these are the general definitions of unit number one that is physical quantities units and measurements. Now let's move towards the definition of unit number two. Okay, so the first definition is distance. The actual length of the path covered by the body is called as distance and it is a scalar quantity. Let's pause. If I am here, I want to move there, then A and B, this can be the distance, this can be the distance, or this can be also the distance. And then displacement, shortest distance between two points. Now, if I will draw like this from A to B, now this is the shortest distance between point A and B. It's a come distance and in dono point scale between mark me per se. So this shortest distance is called as displacement. Then the definition of speed comes over there. Distance traveled per unit time or distance covered in unit time is called as speed. And the formula of speed is equal to distance over time. And in symbols, you may write V is equal to S over T. And the unit of speed is meter per second. Then next definition. Here comes the average speed. The ratio of total distance covered to total time taken is called average speed. And what's the formula again? The formula of average speed is equal to total distance covered over total time taken. The unit of average speed is also meter per second. The next definition is the definition of velocity. Change in displacement per unit time is called as velocity or the rate of change of displacement is also called as velocity. The formula of velocity is displacement over time or V is equal to D over T. Now one very important point, rather its unit is also meter per second. So one very important point, the difference between velocity and speed. If we add direction in speed, then it becomes velocity and if we remove direction from velocity then it becomes speed another difference that speed is a scalar quantity while velocity is a vector quantity then next definitions come and that is the definition of acceleration so acceleration is change in velocity per unit time or rate of change of velocity is also called as acceleration so the formula of acceleration is v minus u over t or change in velocity over time or final velocity minus initial velocity over time. Or you may also write the formula of acceleration is equal to delta V over delta T. So delta V represents change in velocity and delta T obviously represents that time. The unit of acceleration is meter per second square. 
then here comes the definition of uniform acceleration it is a very important definition and it is being asked so many times in past papers if the velocity of the body changes equally in equal intervals of time what does it mean that velocity changes equally in equal intervals of time in other words the difference between the velocities is the same as well as the difference between the time intervals is the same and what is meant by non uniform acceleration so it's mean that if the velocity of the body changes unequally in equal intervals of time ab isme important cheez kya velocity of the body changes unequally in equal intervals of time yahan pe dono kya the equal intervals of time as well as velocity changes equally aur yahan pe kya if velocity of a body changes unequally in equal intervals of time so this is the basic difference between the definition of uniform acceleration and non uniform acceleration then here comes the definition of deceleration what does deceleration mean deceleration ka alternate name jo hai wo pehle dekh lete hain ki its alternate name is retardation so negative acceleration is called deceleration or retardation acceleration positive kab hota hai when velocity of the body increases acceleration will be positive ye kis case mein hai when accelerator is pressed and acceleration negative kab hai when acceleration will be negative when velocity of a body decreases aur ye kab hota hai when brakes are applied so deceleration or retardation ki kya definition hai negative acceleration is called as deceleration or retardation then for a freely falling body a very important term is there and that is gravitational acceleration the acceleration of a freely falling body is called as gravitational acceleration and it is denoted by small g and we have to remember that actual value of gravitational acceleration is 9.8 meter per second square while the simplified value of gravitational acceleration is 10 meter per second square and on earth the actual value is 9.8 meter per second square but usually we use the simplified value that is 10 in order to make our calculation simple and on moon on the surface of moon its value is approximately 1.62 meter per second square then here comes the definition of terminal velocity the will it is also termed as uh, you might say that uniform velocity or constant velocity as well so the velocity of a body under action of balanced forces is called terminal velocity or you can say the velocity of a body when resultant of all the forces acting on the body is zero now in balanced forces the sum of forces also will be equal to zero and the very famous example is of the parrot hooper when parrot hooper jumps only the weight of the body tends to be act vertically downward then gradually air resistance start acting on the body in upward direction like this the weight was acting in downward direction then a time comes when weight becomes equal to air resistance in that case resultant force will be equals to zero and body will move with terminal velocity and in that case the graph will be like this so this part of the graph is representing the terminal velocity of a freely falling body so i hope so that now these definitions are clear to all of you regarding the unit number 1 and unit number 2 thank you very much for watching the channel the physics gurus assalamu alaikum